Hey everybody, this is Blazing903. If you're new to the channel, please hit like and smash that subscribe button. If you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be sharing information on the recently re-announced Ford layoffs. Let's get right into it with the information that we have. On Monday, May 20th, 2019, Ford Motor Company CEO Jim Hackett told his employees that the automaker is entering the final stage of the job cuts that began last year. And by September 2019, it will show a workforce reduction of 7,000 salaried positions globally. This equates to roughly about 10% of its salaried workforce. This will result in a savings of $600 million annually. Since Hackett took over as CEO two years ago, he has implemented an $11 billion global redesign to improve what he calls Ford Fitness, which includes the layoffs as well as cuts to unprofitable and low margin vehicles, including all sedans. Additionally, in 2018, Ford announced a five year cost cutting goal of $25.5 billion as it works to hit an 8% profit margin globally by the year 2020. Hackett has called 2019 a year of action. After taking longer than some analysts and investors would have liked to implement his plans, the automaker stock, after underperforming for years, has risen more than 30% in 2019 thus far. Although shares are still trending lower than when Hackett took over for the former CEO Mark Fields in May 2017, Ford continues to face a lot of pressure to improve its profitability. Its profit margin has lagged behind some of its competitors. It has announced that costs of certain items, namely steel and aluminum, have increased by about $1 billion annually after tariffs were imposed on those products. However, Ford's executives were quick to remind us that the efforts to restructure the business is part of a long-term strategy and not in response to those increased costs. Ford's market value of $41 billion is only slightly higher than Tesla an automaker a fraction of its size that has rarely posted a profit. And its worth is about 40% less than Uber, which only recently went public and has yet to report a profit. But Ford and the rest of the automotive industry is facing a lot of pressure to prepare itself for the future. The majority of the automakers have to buy into new technology and plan for a world full of self-driving cars and customers that would rather pay for an Uber ride than the car itself. It's Ford today and it was GM a few months ago. The majority of the automakers are looking into significant cost savings ideas, says Michelle Kerbs, senior analyst with Cox Automotive. She goes on to say, everyone cut to the bone during the Great Recession, but they have beefed up since then. They have to figure out ways to squeeze more money out of today's business so that money is freed up for future business endeavors. Kerbs goes on to state that automakers are also preparing for a possible slowdown in auto sales and a possible slowing of the U.S. economy. Ford sold 237,000 fewer cars and trucks globally the first quarter of 2019, a 14% drop. A contributing factor is that Ford has essentially dropped the traditional sedan from its U.S. product lineup. As Ford continues to play catch up with other automakers, which are further along in their ambitions for electric and self-driving vehicles. Currently, Ford does not offer any battery only electric vehicles because it halted production of the electric focus when it discontinued production of the gas version. Ford also lags behind other automakers in the race to bring self-driving vehicles to the market. Though, like other automakers, it does have test versions of those vehicles on the road today. In an effort for Ford to continue to move forward, Ford is looking into new alliances as it restructures its business. It has teamed up with Volkswagen to develop new products and recently announced a $500 million investment by way of an electric truck scheduled to debut in 2020. Other big auto companies are also looking toward the future. GM, for example, has brought in millions in investments by setting up a separate unit known as Cruise in an effort to focus on self-driving cars. GM also sold stakes to SoftBank and Honda. Ford said it's looking at the possibility of outside investors in its electric and self-driving vehicles as well. 
As the market reacts to the restructure of such an iconic American company, financial analyst Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley weighs in by saying, and I quote, Ford could require more than 23,000 additional salary jobs to be cut, especially if the company makes no other moves to cut costs elsewhere, because the math is simply not adding up. A Ford spokesperson by the name of Brad Carroll pushed back by saying Ford would cut $25.5 billion in operational costs over the next few years by trimming operational costs in addition to job cuts. Brad goes on to say, We have been very clear that we are in the final stages of the reorganization with our salaried workforce. At the same time, we are working across the company in many other ways to reduce costs and become more fit. As we have said in the past, this is simply not a restructure or a cost-cutting plan. It is a complete redesign of our business model now and in the future. This did not deter Adam's comments from having an impact on the stock market, as it might explain the lukewarm response from Wall Street over the past few days. And since the Ford CEO, Jim Hack, has sent that email to employees notifying them of the layoff protocol this week. Conversely, Wall Street rewarded General Motors with a spike in stock price after its job cuts were announced in late 2018. Unfortunately, Ford would not be so lucky as its stock value has declined. It closed at $10.29 a share on Friday and closed today, Wednesday, May 22nd at $9.97. The future of Ford is simply not looking good. It has a rapidly shrinking presence in the global market. Over the past 10 years, Ford has lost a quarter of its global market share from 7.9 to 5.9. A trend of losing 5% of its market share per year will be accelerated for the next three years as the impact of exiting vehicles in North America and other product eliminations in other regions play out. This is all extremely sad information, but I would love to hear your comments regarding where you think the American automakers are going and if their efforts will result in a leaner, more profitable business model. Should they be doing more? As Ford Motor Company continues to shrink, will it be able to survive without a merger or an acquisition? Only time will tell, but I believe it's going to be an uphill battle. So with that said, I wanted to thank you for tuning in. And as always, till the next one, drive safely.